What is this? I don't even know. So, I have never played Animal Crossing before, and I had originally intended for that to remain the same, but as the release of Animal Crossing New Horizons came closer, and because I can't go outside since, you know, the world is currently on fire, I really didn't have an excuse to not try it out. I decided to play for one week and to play every day in that time. Here's what I experienced. I opened the game and was immediately greeted by two little tanukis explaining to me the wonders of my new island life with Nook Inc. I set my birthday, typed in my legal name, and it was time to create my character. Uwu. And with that, I was ready to set out on the adventure of a lifetime. Or so I thought. There were still a few more questions I had to answer, like what I wanted for my island layout, and what I would bring with me on a deserted island. And because there was no option to bring my anime body pillow, I decided that the next best thing would be food. Pizza, of course. Time to board my plane! My in-flight entertainment consisted of a beautiful presentation of the regal island lifestyle I would soon be experiencing. It was packed with nice visuals and examples of the many activities available on a deserted island. If the point of this game was to be cute, then they certainly succeeded. And I'm not sure that isn't the point. We're here, and it's time to explore. Yeah! Aww. Not quite yet, as I still had to meet the man, the myth, the legend, and my gracious host, Mr. Tom Nook. After basic introductions, it's time to set up my tent in whatever spot I like. This is going to be the place where I will be living for the foreseeable future, and through this meticulous process, I must pick only the perfect spot. I'm done. Ah, but apparently not, because I also have to pick the spots for my other villagers, too. My villagers consisted of Rowan, the tiger, and Canberra, the whatever the fuck that is. He's got a shady look in his eyes. I pick their spots and head back to Nook, and it's time to throw a party! He tells me to collect some firewood while he finds some food to eat, which basically translates to him telling me to collect both of these items for him while he stands still in this exact spot. Alright, let's name this sucker. I've been thinking for a while about this name, and I think it's just perfect for my new home. Welcome to Dingusville! Well, apparently Pat Sajak over here won't let me buy another vowel, so Dingus Land will have to do. And because I named the island, I also became its resident representative. The King of Comedy strikes again. And with that, my introduction into the world of Animal Crossing is complete. Time to hit the hay! That night, in an intricate dream sequence, I'm visited by K.K. Slider, the smooth-talking, guitar-playing canine rover, who gives me some simple, but great advice about friendship. Because having some pals with me is pretty groovy. Now it's time to wake up, sync to real time, and truly start this adventure. Day 1. I'm awoken by Tom Nook at the crack of dawn, aka 2pm. He gives me a free smartphone called a Nook phone that will help me keep up with everything I need. Man, this guy is awesome. Not only did he throw me a party and give me a phone, he let me move to an island paradise free of charge. What's not to like about Tom Nook? Oh, fuck. Well, shit, I just moved here and I'm already in debt. What is this, the United States? But it's okay, because rather than paying my debt with money, Nook has allowed me to pay him back in Nook Miles. Points that can be earned by doing everyday tasks around the island. They have no actual value and are an arbitrary system set up by Nook himself. Seems like I might be getting scammed here. But hold on, most of these achievements don't directly help Mr. Nook at all. In fact, he's practically giving me most of these miles. Not just practically, he just gives me some of them. This guy's a goddamn saint! After Nook explains everything to me, I can seemingly do whatever I want. This is the coolest! What should I do first? There's so many options, I can't choose! I could go for a little fishing expedition, or... Oh, maybe bug collecting is more my style. Ah, but what about gathering some resources and building furniture? The possibilities are endless, and the world is my oyster! Let's go! You know, this game is a little too realistic. The first thing I did was visit Residential Services, where Tom told me that he wanted to study the local fauna and to bring him some specimens. So, let's go fishing. Alright, now, how do I do this? 
Um, no. Uh, do I hit? Uh, no, that's not. No. Uh, hey, stop. No, stop. Uh, uh, there we go. Fish time! Fuck. After finding five bugs or fish, I gave them to Tom, who sent them to his museum curator friend, and he then hooked me up with the Critterpedia app, a handy little virtual encyclopedia that logs all of the creatures I encounter in the game. It's an extremely novel app, but there's still a lot of empty spaces, so I need to get hunting. At the same time, I'm still trying out new things and talking to the others for tips and tricks. After selling some stuff to him, Timmy let me know about the fruit system. By eating fruit, I can get quote unquote energized, which will allow me to perform certain actions, like breaking rocks and digging up whole trees, which is pretty cool. I was, however, disappointed that I didn't unlock my anime boy powers after consuming 10 of them. I then spotted a floating present in the sky, and I tried hooking it with my fishing rod, to no avail. It fluttered over the river, which I seemingly can't cross quite yet. Fat L. There really wasn't a whole lot of actual island building on the first day. Mostly it was just a lot of learning, but it was still super rewarding for me and T-Dog here. I mean, just look at how happy he is. He is always smiling, even in his sleep. Nothing could ruin his good mood. What the fucking shit was that? I literally just got knocked out and mugged by a tarantula. Didn't know I was playing the Nintendo equivalent to Grand Theft Auto. It even made T-Dog lose his smile for about 0.2 seconds. Slow down, zoom, enhance, and there. He's sad. Well, at least it can't get any worse, I suppose. What the heck, game? I was having such a pleasant time for hours, and now in the span of five minutes, I've been attacked twice. And now I look like this. <sighs> I couldn't have scheduled a worse time to have my passport photo taken. Hanging on my island and I'm chopping down trees. trees. Gotta watch out or I'll get attacked by bees. There's two other villagers I hate a, a lot. lot. And one of them talks about his bulging. The last few important things I did on my first day was set up my own crafting table and find a suitable spot for Tom's museum curating friend Blathers, who liked my specimen so much, he decided to move here the very next day. Oh, and I, I guess I also paid off my crippling debt. So, there's that. And with that, it was time to hit the sack, Jack. Day two. Don't judge me. Tom Nook has an announcement. The Dingus Land Airport is now ready for service. Now I can go to more islands and play with friends. Of course, I don't have those, so I think I'll do some work around here for now. The first thing I did today was open up some of the packages I had ordered on day one. Oh yeah, now I look super pimp. Time to show off to my new bird brother Blathers, the museum curator. He tells me that he wants to build a museum on my island, but before he can do that, he needs 15 more specimen to display, which now include fossils. Of course, those are only currently available across the river, and only by digging. Luckily, Blathers gives me a vaulting pole DIY recipe, and also I can now build or buy a flimsy shovel. Not only that, but I can build upgraded tools now, and this adventure is starting to get interesting. Also, also, upon visiting residential services, Nook rewards me with a Nook Miles ticket so I can go to other islands, and he gives me the option to upgrade my humble tent into a full-blown house. Awesome! What's the damage? 98,000 bells, huh? Well, how many do I have? Back into the hole I go! On top of my newly acquired debt, Timmy informs me that Dingus Land needs a shop, and that he needs help from everyone on the island to build one. Which means I have to get all the materials myself. He needs 30 of each wood type and 30 iron nuggets. The 90 wood he needs is doable. I already have a decent amount without really trying to collect it. 30 iron nuggets though? That's a different story. Iron nuggets come from rocks, and breaking a rock gives you about a 1 in 3 chance of getting an iron nugget. Even with the new parts of the island available to me, I've only got between 2-4 to four rocks right now. So either A, I'm going to be waiting quite a few days to get all the iron I need, or B, there's another better way to harvest them that I don't know about yet. While repopulating Dingus Land's foliage and getting stung by wasps again while doing so, I broke a rock to reveal a bag of money. 8,000 bells. I'M RICH! The next thing on the agenda is to start gathering new stuff for Blathers so he can open up the museum. 
So that's what I did for about the next hour. I even caught a fish called a dab! Well, I only need six more, and I definitely think fishing will be the quickest way to do that, so let's keep... Oh god, I... I think it's dead. No? No, not dead. Just crazy. This collapsed bird is Gulliver, and boy is he an absolute idiot. He fell off his ship and ended up on Dingus Land. He also lost the communicator parts for his smartphone, so he can't call for help. So, naturally, it's up to me. Sure, man, I'll help you find your things. It's not like I have a shop to build or new specimens to collect. No, no, let me help you. So I found his stuff, and he says he'll send me a gift later to thank me. Better be the best goddamn gift I've ever gotten for wasting my precious time. After that interruption, I was able to collect the rest of the stuff I needed to get Blathers to start building the museum, which will take two days. Now back to getting the shop done. I had already broken all my rocks, so I decided it may be a good idea to visit a friend's island to get more. Oh, yeah, what I said earlier was a joke. I'm a world-famous YouTuber. Of course I have friends. Naturally, I got distracted. It was a beautiful day here in Albuquerque. I decided to sit out in the sun for a bit to maybe get a tan, or in my case, a sunburn. I then made out like a bandit and stole my friend's secret pair. Unfortunately, I think she realized it was gone. I blamed the monkey villager in her town, and we went to her house. She tried showing me around, but I was too enamored by her boxing station to care. We then decided to pay our other friend a visit at his island. He was wearing a stupid frog shirt. We ran around for a bit, but there was a battle for a secret cash stash, which of course, I won. My friend insisted that I keep it, and I obliged. He was so happy for me. But that was enough messing around. I only managed to find one more iron nugget, and that wasn't gonna cut it. So, I figured I'd sleep on it and wait for more rocks to spawn tomorrow. Day three. It's time to start figuring out how to play this game, which includes figuring out how to sprint. Yes, it took me until day three to figure out that you could run. But more importantly, I had to figure out how to get iron nuggets faster. And luckily, I found a little trick from Twitter. With zero food in your belly, you can hit rocks up to nine times for materials, which gives you way more of everything. Also, you can do this with your daily money rock too. Nice. Another thing I figured out was that you can cycle through tools with the D-pad instead of pausing the game to select them. This can be useful, but most of the time I have a lot of tools, so it takes a while to scroll through them all. So that's some helpful stuff. But something that isn't helpful? The spiders. <laughs> After I hit all the rocks on my island, I was still well short of the iron nugget quantity I required to open the shop. So I finally decided to use my Nook Miles ticket to see if I could get more rocks. I had originally thought that the ticket sent you to the island of another random player, but it actually sends you to a randomly generated island, meaning that all the resources would be mine and mine alone. The random islands also have some stuff that was previously unavailable to me, like flowers. But more importantly, this is how you get more villagers to move to your island. The first three times I went to a random island, I met three villagers. Midge the bird, who is adorable, Benedict the rooster, who isn't, and Patty the cow, who is... my dinner. I did a lot of stuff on these islands. I found some new species of bugs and fish, like this here football fish. It doesn't really look like a football, but boy does it look like a fish. I don't know. I collected some coconut, but most importantly, I collected more iron nuggets. Of course, it's taking longer than it should be because I kept eating fruit to clear my inventory space. I'm watching the footage back right now and I keep getting pissed at myself because of how many times I ate fruit without cause and then broke a rock without getting the maximum amount of items. Also, the actual most important thing I did was make an ocarina. And I didn't have any more time to play today, so I'll have to wait another day to finish the shop. It's a rainy, gloomy day here at Dingus Land. Could this be a sign of things to come? No! That's stupid. I'll definitely need to keep grinding iron nuggets today, but I need to check out the Dingus Land Museum, which just so happened to open today. First things first though, let's check the mail. Ouch. Let me just say this. If the Critterpedia wasn't enough incentive to get you to want to collect more species, then the museum probably will be. It is gorgeous especially the aquarium section. And it really puts my outdoor aquarium to shame. Blathers, I wasn't originally sure about you, but let me officially welcome you to Dingus Land with a ceremony. <coughs> the next thing to do is to finish paying off my home loan, which after selling some sea bass, I had just enough bells to complete the task. <sighs> Boy, does it feel great to get that weight off my shoulders. I feel lighter than air. Hmm, a room expansion, huh? 
198,000 bells. I'll take it! And finally, after way too long, I collected the 30 iron nuggets I needed and placed the shop to be built by tomorrow. Day five. My house has been expanded, so now I have more room for all the things I don't have. I think it might be a good time to add some stuff to spruce the place up a bit. Let me just see what I got here. Wait, shop construction kit? Why do I have this? Oh no. Fuck. So I guess the game didn't save properly after I placed the construction kit. So... Day six, the shop is complete. Wowzers! Yes, I time traveled. I wasn't going to, but like I clearly put the shop kit down on day four and I didn't want to have to wait a whole nother day for it to be built. The main reason for that is because getting a shop open unlocks the ability to build a bridge and new housing plots to get new villagers to move into your village. For you purists out there who might be a little bit upset with me, I didn't go past what I could do on this day normally. In fact, I'm still behind because it took me two days to start building the shop anyways. Trust me, that needs to be said because apparently you're basically Hitler if you time travel in this game. Even explaining myself probably won't be enough to some people out there, but whatever. So I placed the bridge and after clearing out all the trees in the area, I placed the three housing plots as well. But oh boy, we're not done yet. We also have to furnish these houses with six items each, many of which require a lot of important materials. This is gonna be a lot of work, but at the very least, this fetch quest allows the ladder to become available. So now I can explore all the parts of my island and any other island I visit, which I'm gonna have to do because I'm running low on materials like clay and stone. <sighs> Go to the terminal, buy a Nook Miles ticket. I already had one. Go to the airport to fly with Irony Airlines and... <gasps> Apples! Well, how about that? I lucked into the last fruit I needed for my island. Now, I'm not sure how rare this is, but all the other random islands I visited have my default fruit, which was oranges. So now I feel a little bit better. Then after about four bazillion years of making furniture for the new houses, I finally finished and am rewarded with outdoor fencing. This is actually a pretty cool reward. I had been thinking about fixing up the front of my house to look a little better. And while I'm at it, let me fix up the inside a little bit too. Epic. So I left for a bit, but I decided to come back later at night for a special project. It's time to pay back a good chunk of my debt. I took a plane to a new random island with a single goal in mind. Destroy everything. Break the rocks, chop the trees, dig up the stumps, crush the flowers, and rip out the weeds. Why am I doing this, you may ask? Well, I'll tell you. I'm trying to spawn tarantulas. I would never do this in a normal situation. I am deathly afraid of spiders, both in this game and in real life. But these motherfuckers sell for up to 8,000 bells per spider. I don't know which one of these assholes on my island is demanding these demons for them to be so profitable, but I need to find out who they are so I can kick them the hell off of Dingus Land. It's probably Canberra, that shifty-eyed rat. The key to creating a spider island is to have a lot of flat space to work with because that's the only land where they could spawn. They're actually quite rare and they only appear at night, but by having an island with practically nothing but flat area, you can force them to spawn super quick. I actually got pretty lucky here. The island I went to had no rivers or ponds and is only one level. So I've set up the island exactly as necessary, but there's one more problem. I suck. I'm bad at bug catching in general for some reason, but especially when I have these hairy fucks chasing at me at full speed. I fainted a lot, but in the end, it was very worth it. I made out with 124,000 bells, and it only took me about an hour to do. And that was the end of day six. I'm sure the nightmares tonight will be especially terrifying. Day seven. This is the last day of my first week of Animal Crossing. I have two things on my to-do list. One make my house look better. And two, fish and catch a lot of bugs. And I guess I can also check up on my future dinner. I'm thinking of a nice filet. One way to totally pimp out my house is with some customization. And luckily, old Tommy Nook is having a workshop just this very minute. How convenient. In fact, it's a bit too convenient. I'm getting a little suspicious that this game might revolve around me. Nah. Build a wardrobe, paint it black, put it in my house, profit. Oh, I also made my walk up a bunch of pictures of my face. Fishing time. I looked up a chart and learned a lot about fish spawns in the process. They are affected by both the time of day and the location. And I wanna get some stuff I haven't found yet. I've seen a lot of people reeling in these massive lunkers and 
I want to have a cool fish to show off. The way to do that seems to be by fishing from the pier on your island. By digging up clams, you can get a DIY recipe for fish bait that will let you spawn a fish every time you use it. So I'm going to do that at the pier. And I'm prepared to find a ton of sea bass. The joke makes as much sense the first time as it does the 700th time. I did a ton of fishing on day seven, about three hours worth, and I caught a lot of stuff I didn't have yet. But by far, my most cherished specimen that I found was a blue marlin. It actually didn't take too much pier fishing to find it, and I don't know how rare they are, but damn, does it look awesome swimming around in my aquarium. And that's pretty much all I did on day seven. I played for five hours, and three of those were spent fishing. Oh, and in case you're wondering, I paid my debt off again. And then immediately went back into debt when I took out a loan for another room. So, that was my week one experience with Animal Crossing, and I gotta tell you, I'm absolutely hooked. I'm still not sure if I could even explain why, but if I had to try, I would say that this game is just satisfying, and I would absolutely recommend it, especially as a way to get through these tough times. If you liked the video, please consider pressing the like button and subscribing, and please remember to be smart and stay safe. See you guys next time. Peace.